Welcome to Research Matters with Unda and Kuda, an online show that is all about communicating the research taking place at NAS in efforts to promote the university's research agenda and the impact thereof. You heard it right. It is exactly 11, 15 minutes past the hour of 11 and uh, it's time for Research Matters with Kuda and Unda and that is a research uh, platform rather right here on Nast FM where we discuss various research uh, disciplines and so forth um, right here on Nast FM. Welcome. Thank you as always, uh, Unda. It's great to be back. Now today in the house we have Prof. Benjamin Mapani. He is from the Faculty of Engineering and Built Environment, particularly the Department of Civil, Mining and Process Engineering. Now, his research interests range from geodynamics of mobile belts to tree ring research and dendroclimatology. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> Literally, Prof, Prof must bring it down to like our <laughs> level. It sounds so cool saying it, but Prof... <laughs> <laughs> Take it away. Please let us know what does this mean? What are some of your these just let's before we dive into it, what what does this mean? What I just said. Okay, so uh, you touched on uh, uh, a number of different disciplines there. So there's when you look at geodynamics, for example, um, we are looking at uh, the architecture of the earth. Uh, with a view to see where we can find minerals. For example, we've been, uh, I've been looking at uh, zircon geochronology, meaning how old the rocks are. The main reason for that is to find which kind of uh, rocks are likely to contain uh, valuable minerals and so that we can uh, look for them and uh, hopefully open a mind so that you can have a cell phone and I can speak to this beautiful microphone which has got neodymium magnets in here which make the noise come up to my ears and we have gold to make your cell phone uh, send its signals so well across the, the screen and we have also silicon and phosphorus that makes your touch, touch screen to work. My goodness. Wow. <laughs> I, I never thought it was that deep. Right? right? And I'm also here thinking as a radio presenter, I didn't actually know what goes into all of it. Hey, I'm just using this mic and I'm just thinking, I don't know, it works. It's <laughs> exactly. supposed to do what it's doing. But Prof, how did you get into this discipline? As a young man, how did you, you know, how did you get here? Was this always the vision? Uh, no, no, not at all. I mean, uh, I think life is very interesting. Uh, I, I, I was meant to be a, a mathematics and chemistry teacher. I'd got a scholarship to study chemistry and math mm -hmm. uh, from Standard Bank, Standard Chartered Bank. Uh, but when I reached the university, uh, that particular year, for some reason, either fortunately or unfortunately, uh, uh, fellows who had applied to study engineering did not uh, do so well. There were so few students. Mm -hmm. So a professor from engineering came and said, uh, we want some people to do some uh, geology and uh, metallurgy because we don't have so many students this year. And and then he asked us to apply, and uh, and here I am today. With no hesitation. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> let's just take a few steps back. So you had funding for a particular course. You get to university. Everything changes. Now you're in a completely different field. Now, did you have funding for that? Because most of the times, that's also something that dictates which field we get in, right? I'm like, okay, Absolutely. I've got funding for this. The money yeah. is, is, a, is, a, is a thing, so I'm, I'm going to stick to this. And So two questions. Was there funding for the other course, and what did your parents say? Um, my parents, my father had been a teacher, so he wanted me to be a teacher as well. My, si my older sister is a teacher. <laughs> 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 so fortunately there was funding the professor said there will be funding there was funding from the mining industry for that uh, particular uh, course so I informed Standard Bank that I'm changing courses to, to study this and they said oh fine we can give that scholarship to someone else 
Oh, wow. wow. I think that right there is already um not to say privilege per se but luck because yeah. how much you know um if you, let's go if we take uh, NSFA for example they're probably going to be reluctant if you wanted to change course in terms of what you want to study because they already have an idea of how many they want to produce in yes. a specific discipline and so forth so prof you were definitely lucky but what would you say were some of the rookie you, mistakes that you made early on in your career I think the biggest mistake I made, I hope there are some first years listening, yeah. Yeah. was that when I went to first year at university, I really played. <laughs> played hard. But was there a balance? Was there, no, was there anything else? Because you say work hard and play hard. We yeah. really played. Well, I, I, was, I, was, I was working hard, but I think I played a bit more. Oh. And I woke up in the second semester. Uh, to say no, I need to pull up my socks. But I I realized that if I had started working at a constant pace in my first semester, I would have done much better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when I went into my second year, uh, from second year onwards, I, I I I was just I did not have any burdens. I had an easy time at university. I enjoyed my time at university. Oh wow, that is absolutely beautiful, especially to be able to realize very early on that um I need to get serious and you know to really align everything that you want in life to certain mannerisms and characteristics and certain intentional behaviors that's highly commendable and i hope uh, everyone who's listening not only first years but to realize look you have to get on track yeah, yeah? now prof uh, just to talk back maybe you know really to get back to the research what are some of the projects uh, that you're working on right now in the research space in your particular field Okay, right now um, I have a number of projects. I have um, a water security project for Namibia. So this one involves a lot of stakeholders. As you know, Namibia is a very dry country and we depend on water, the groundwater for that matter. So the water we drink in Windhoek, most of it, 90% of it, comes from Begaukas. And it has to be pumped from Begaukas to Omatako Dam, pumped from Omatako Dam to Von Bak Dam in Okahanja and then uh, treated there and then pumped to Windhoek. And then around Windhoek, we've got a few boreholes. We complement that water with the water we come from here. And the water that the people in Karibib drink is also from uh, Begaukas. It comes from uh, Von Bak Dam. They transfer it to Swakoput Dam and then pumped to Never Have Mine and Caribbean Town. So what we've been doing in one of my research on water security, it involves NAM Water, mm-hmm. Minister of uh, Agriculture, Water and Land Reform, mm-hmm. and local authorities around the country. Uh, we've been looking at a lot of local authorities. So our idea is um, to try and help identify how they can save water. Uh, my specific interest is to check on water losses in the pipe system. So together with our uh, uh, consortium friends, we have here at NAS people from mathematics, from computer science by Professor Bonu, who are trying to develop an app Mm. to integrate into water resource management. So our job, like my particular part of research in this big research, is to try and see how we can develop uh, small magnetometers that can identify uh, pipe base below ground mm. before uh, uh, the water is lost. So because we know, for example, in Caribbean, they lose close to about uh, uh, 70 to 100 cubic meters of water. And that's a lot of water. So we don't want that water to be lost. So this is, this is one of the big projects that I have. It's, uh, it involves a lot of stakeholders. Uh, here at NAS, we have mathematics department, computer science, engineering, civil engineering and so forth. So we want to change, kind of reduce the amount of expenses we spend on uh, provision of clean water. So we have Rundu, Katima, Ondangwa, uh, Enana, uh, uh, Karibib, uh, Sokopmund, those are the areas we are working in. I'm back. If you've just joined us, you are listening to Unda and Kuda right here on Nast FM and today in studio. We have Prof Mapani with us. He is a professor in the Department of Civil, Mining and Process Engineering, and we're having quite a blast here. Now, before we even proceed, Prof, just tell us a little bit about that song. Why that song, Three Times a Lady by Lionel Richie? Um, 
that song has uh, a special place in my heart. Um, I think uh, the first time I fell in love. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> that's the that's the that's song. That's the song. Yes, the song. yes, yes. I yes, love yes. the way music can take you down memory lane. Truly, it's absolutely beautiful. We'll leave it at that. Thank okay. you so much, Prof. Now, just back to what we were talking about. You know, research matters and everything. What would you say to encourage young people to take up careers in this field? So maybe someone is looking at this space and they're thinking, mm, should I, should I not? What would you say to them? Um, actually, as, uh, as researchers, what we try and do is um, in, our, in our projects is to involve students as well because uh, students see what you do and you go with them in the field. Uh, they learn by example and by doing. And... Uh, it is our hope that those students would take up that uh, kind of career in the future. But also, um, when we are in class, when we are giving them lectures and stuff, we should not just go there and teach them. We need to teach them about life. We say, okay, so mm-hmm. if, if uh, s- most of our students worry about getting the highest mark in the class, but I would like to mention that in most cases, the most useful students are not the A students. <laughs> wow, I like that. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> Who would have thought? It's, uh, it's normally the C students. They become the citizens. Mm. They, 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 they think beyond their career. They are not uh, completely uh, 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 focused on their work only. They do their work and do other things. For example, uh, when they finish, most of them would also take up uh, an extracurricular activity to maybe uh, help or donate time. Mm. Like um, when in my free time, I try and go to the children's home, help those who are weak in maths and so forth, free of charge. Mm. And uh, also would like to encourage our students that uh, when they are actually uh, working or doing something, they can actually do something else in their community at home. You don't have to do it alone. You can you can get people to help you. So the, most likely, most people who do that are the C students. Mm. And some of my C students have done great things in places like Enana. You know, they've started their own uh, uh, companies and stuff. So. Um, university is a platform. You don't necessarily have to uh, be, so so to say, the best in your class in order to to be to have a very good quality life. Mm-hmm. So we are learning skills of life, mm-hmm. and so uh, we do it for society, and each depends on the other. We depend on our students. Our depend our students depend on us, and that's why we need to be. Um, civil towards our students. Mm. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, Prof, you've already accomplished so much, right? But if we were to fast forward, to, let's say 2033, what would you still want to achieve in your career? What is that one thing that you're like, I still need to do this before I feel like I've ticked it off? Unfortunately, research is very addictive. Mm. <laughs> and uh, like, like, like what I'm doing now uh, in, in, in my triggering research, it's, it's something that has really uh, touched my passion. Mm. I've just, uh, uh, my background is that uh, when I was doing geodynamics, I did isotopic studies of, of rocks to see how water flows from one place to another or how minerals would form in a particular place. But that skill, I found that it's very useful in climate change research. Trees take up water. And if you analyze the water in the tree rings, they give you a certain isotopic composition. So an isotopic composition is like a signature. It's like uh, uh, something you you can pick up to see, okay, here the tree suffered a fire, here the tree was in a flood, here the tree was uh, bent by wind. So all that information is recorded in a tree. And then, and then you can measure the edge of the tree by just counting the rings. 
patiently. Normally, I prefer ladies because they are very patient <laughs> 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 to do this kind of research. So I had a postdoc and a student, master student, doing this uh, this kind of work in my in, in my work. So we we did uh, some triggering research for climate for climate research mm. to to see how climate is going to change and how it can affect our farmers. So it's not just to do research for the sake of research. It's very interesting, but we'd like to see how it will affect our farmers. Are we expecting more rain in the next 20 years, 40 years, or less rain? What kind of crops should we encourage our farmers to grow? So this tree ring research is, uh, is really something I'm so passionate about. Even when I retire, I think I'll still be doing it. It truly really is fascinating, uh, yeah. Prof. <laughs> so to, to just to wrap up that particular point, so what is it, if you just had to put it in one sentence, what is that thing that you still need to uh, check a box on to say, okay, I've done that too? Okay, so um, what I would like to really to accomplish now is to ensure that if I can study at least... Uh, we've done three species. If I can study at least five to six species of trees and find a complete match on all those five in the climate history, it will make me a very happy man because I'll know that my conclusions uh, are, are, are set in, in, in proper science. So we've published about uh, maybe seven, eight papers on tree ring research. And one of my uh, postdocs, uh, when we did the first paper, uh, she said, I want to send it to a journal called Dendrochronology. I said, no, 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 that's too high for us. We are not really plant not scientists. We are, we are climate <laughs> scientists. <laughs> then she said, no, no, no. She said, and she did send it, and it got published there. And it was very nice when it got published in a, a journal with a very high impact factor. And uh, we'd like to publish more so that we can have Southern Africa at least put on the map. Most of the information on our climate is obtained by people studying other things elsewhere in the world. We want our own data to actually represent what we are going through. And that's, that's what I want to achieve. I like that a lot because essentially what just came to mind when you were saying all of that is research for impact. Mm. And like you said, not only just researching for the sake of researching and just getting to the next level, so to put it, but to actually make a difference and be able to, to have your name on it. Put a name on it. <laughs> and that definitely must be fulfilling as well because you know you're, you're doing it for the greater good. It's not just to you know, get that accolade or that title and so forth. So that, that warms my heart as well. But that brings us to the end of Research Matters with Kuda and Unda. And of course, you can always, always uh, check us out right here on Tuesdays at www.nastfm.na. But of course, for more details on the episode, you can check out and follow the Research Innovation in partnerships at NAST uh, pages that is on Facebook and LinkedIn as well as the NAST FM Facebook, Instagram and Twitter pages.